All right, we are officially recording this uh, webinar for everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight from wherever you guys are. Uh, apologize for the little technical difficulty. It was unbelievable. Just as we had logged on and uh, our, inter went, our internet went down briefly here. So not sure what that was, but we can thank Spectrum uh, Cable later on. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys are all doing great wherever you guys are. And it's been a while since I've connected with some of you, uh, whether it's by phone, text, Facebook, or live. I'm glad that we're able to uh, visit here today. Um, I wanted to just encourage all of you right now that uh, I'm going to be sharing with you guys a bunch of uh, stuff here on my PowerPoint, and there's just it's a lot of material. So I want to encourage you guys to grab your cell phones and um, make t just take your cell phones and and um, take pictures of the screens so that you guys can get all this content. Uh, again, if you, if you guys have my office number or my cell number, my email, my staff, you're more than welcome to reach out to us this week because I know that we have been very, very busy for the better part of the last two and a half weeks as this whole stay in home ordinance, this pandemic, epidemic, whatever you want to call it, a uh, viral outbreak that... Um, uh, that people have been calling and just asking what my thoughts are, uh, you know, how's our family doing, which we appreciate tremendously that you are inquiring about us. And I, I hope that you and all your family are doing extremely well. Um, you know, I, 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 at this time, I don't want to spend too much time, you know, talking about the coronavirus as, as many of you, everybody's got an opinion about it. And so what I really want to do is talk to you about what's going on today in terms of the economy and uh, the state of your business. So enough of the coronavirus, and I want to just talk to you guys about this. Um, for the last, um, I don't know, 25 years, we have been talking about the six principles to financial security or the six steps. Uh, if you had joined me two weeks ago or last week, uh, as I've been doing these calls on a weekly basis, we've had a unanimous number of people emailing, texting us, and saying we'd like to do these twice a week. And so we are going to do these on Tuesdays and Saturday mornings for your benefit and to bring you up to date as to what is really going on. And so here, you know, if you see my cursor, can they see my cursor? Yeah, okay, great. Um, you know, number one is increasing your cash flow, managing your debt, having an emergency fund, proper protection, creating long-term savings accounts, and preserving your assets and preserving your estate. These, these are things that I've, I've been preaching for the last 20, God, 1994, so what is that, almost like, uh, I guess 25 years, I'm not even sure, but uh, it's been a while, it's been a long time. Today, as we're experiencing this, what's going on in our, in our country, around the world, globally, is this right here. Number three is, is having an emergency fund. Uh, such a critical thing right now because everyone is experiencing this emergency. A lot of you that have been to my home or to my warehouse, you, you've all seen that, uh, you know, I, I have been, some people call it a zombie apocalypse. I'm a, I'm a, some people call me a, whatever, a prepper or whatever it is. Uh, I, I, for me, it just seems like it was common sense. I mean, we, for those of you that don't know, I live here in California and uh, right here in, by Malibu, and we're in, a, in an earthquake uh, state. So, you know, I, I have friends who've been there during Hurricane Katrina. They've been there for, for uh, Sandy, uh, all these different, you know, natural disasters, and every single person has had some sort of emergency. And I know that if that day came, that I just want to make sure that I'm prepared. So here we are. We, we're, we've been preparing uh, for a lot of different things. Uh, for California, and this is why I've been, some people call me, not that I'm a hoarder, but I'm a, I, I've been stockpiling for quite a bit of time. Um, so number three is always having an emergency fund. Number four, proper protection. As people are going through the coronavirus, they're losing their jobs, losing their income stream. They didn't have emergency fund, and uh, they don't have cash flow. So we're going to talk about some of these things here today. And so, um, you know, the, the concern I have is that there are a lot of people who have assets, so they are asset rich, but they're cash poor. So they're asset rich, 
but cash poor. And so there's a lot of people who have equity in their house, but they don't have any money. And so right now, we uh, believe that cash is king. I've always said that cash is king. So what do most people need right now? Um, I'll tell you what they're going to need right now. They need toilet paper and they need money. So those are the things that most people are looking at. I'm kidding. That's part of that's a joke, right? Uh, the toilet paper, hey, if you run out, just shower, right? But money, if you run out of money, you're in a bit of, you know, pickle because you can't buy any groceries. You certainly can't buy toilet paper. Uh, you can't pay for your living expenses. So where can we go get money? Well, for the people who saved enough money, and even though our textbook as a financial professional, they say that an emergency fund should have at least 90 days of, uh, of money saved away or tucked away. I totally disagree with that. In fact, I, I think the minimum that most people should have is one year. Uh, ideally would be to have two years worth of emergency funds that is liquid. So uh, I don't want my money to be tied up in real estate. I don't want my money tied up in, in uh, 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 retirement accounts where I can't access that money uh, because you got the 59 and a half year 10% penalty tax that would be imposed uh, by the IRS. And depending on which state you live in, then you've got the two and a half percent. So at the end of the day, if, if you need money, which is what I want to talk to you guys about today, because I'm going to tell you that probably 95, 98 percent of the people who are calling me uh, on a daily basis, texting us, emailing every day. Um, what does it say here? Uh, oh, later. Okay, thanks. So um, things are popping up on my screen. So uh, anyway, so I lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Uh, oh, yeah. They were basically saying, everybody's saying that they wanted money. So, John, we need money. We need funding. And so I want to talk to you guys about that here today. So this right here is we abbreviate this EIDL. Uh, it's called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. The Economic Injury disaster loan. Uh, very, very important. And people are saying, is this for real? Is this uh, a joke? It, it's not a joke. And it is very much real. It is available for all of you right now. And if you are an entrepreneur or a business owner, there's no question in my mind that I believe that you should actually take advantage of this right now. Many of you that have offices, you've got rent, you've got employees, you have staff, you've got expenses in running your business. There is no question that this is something that you should take advantage of. So here's the thing. Right now, I mean, tonight, I mean, there's nothing more important other than your safety and the well-being of your family and their health, uh, you know, is to jump on this website at www.sba.gov forward slash disaster. And when you go onto this, uh, this site, what I want you to see is you'll see something like this. You'll see uh, hurricanes, Florence, Michael, and for the first time ever, like the first time ever, and, you know, in 30 years that, I, that I've been a business person, I have never seen this. Uh, I've spoken to the SBA, and this is also for the first time according to the SBA. Um, typically what happens is the SBA will come in and if there's a natural disaster and you've got some sort of property damage to your building, your home, or what have you, then the government stepped in and gave you some relief. Now, this is the first time ever in history where the government is now offering you a disaster plan uh, for a, uh, a viral outbreak. So this has never happened ever um, in the history that I know of. And, and according to the SB and the people I spoke with over there, this is also for them the first time that they've ever seen this. So. This is by the SBA. It is a federally funded program. It provides a low interest disaster loan for business owners and homeowners. And by the way, what's interesting here is that you don't actually have to be a homeowner. Uh, it's, it's in addition to homeowners and it's available to renters. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this in detail from any declared disaster in the coronavirus COVID-19 is now part of this program. So let me get into this with you a little bit more in detail. This is an economic injury right here, keyword economic. So it does not have to be a property damage. Uh, it could be an economic uh, injury. And I can tell you that most people who, who have not saved money are experiencing this economic injury. I don't know anybody unless you're in the food industry uh, where, uh, you know, everything else has just gone um, to hell. 
So if you're uh, in the food industry, you might be doing well. And I'm talking like grocery stores, Costco, they're doing well. But I say food, even restaurants are suffering today. Most restaurants are suffering today. And so this, again, SBA makes the loans for small businesses, private uh, or uh, companies, and nonprofit organizations. And it is a disaster loan that's up to $2 million in assistance and, and whatever they can that you can use. We'll talk about this more in detail. Now, what's amazing about this is that the interest rate here is 3.75%. That is a fixed interest rate that you can qualify for. If, you're, if you've got a nonprofit organization, man, 2.75% fixed. You can't go wrong. And, and to help you make this program affordable so you can repay back the loan, they're amortizing it over a 30-year term. So you've got 30 years to pay this uh, money back to the government. And if I was you, I mean, you know, for me, I mean, I, I, I'm applying for it myself. Not, not because I don't have the money. I got the money. But if I can borrow money at 3.75%, I'd rather borrow that money and use that money to pay for my staff, my expenses, my office rent, all that kind of stuff, rather than using my own money, right, where it's getting some guaranteed rate of returns today uh, at a lot higher interest rate than that. And I'll, I'll talk about that because a lot of people are saying, what do I have my money today? And I'll, and I'll tell you where I have my money because it's going to blow you away. Um, so here Here's the other great thing is that the first month payment, like the repayment, is deferred for a whole year. So let's say you actually got your funding in May, right? So between May 1st and May of next year, you have no payment to make, and you could use all this money. Basically, uh, just paying the interest is uh, all, all you got to pay. But on that, there's no, no payment in terms of – and by the way, you don't even have to pay the interest, but, it, but if you want to, you certainly can. So that's pretty amazing. And here's what's really cool. Um, according to this program, you'll be approved by the SBA solely – Listen to this right here. This is key. I mean, I could add one page just on this, solely on your credit score alone. And so some people said, John, I filed bankruptcy several years back. Here's what's good news. Even if you file bankruptcy, it does not, does not disqualify you from applying for this loan right now. I mean, this, this right here, I mean, if you're all listening to me right now, just this page right here should be enough to get you to go understand, oh, my God, I'm glad I'm on this webinar uh, listening to John right now. So I want you to know that this is not the apocalypse. A lot of people are calling and say, you know, John, it must feel great that you've got all that food stored up and you got all of those uh, – all that equipment and things like that in your inventory uh, because, man, we're, we're not a pa- prepared for the apocalypse. And I said, this isn't the apocalypse. I mean, come on, folks, and we'll talk about that momentarily. I've got some other slides I want to share with you, but i got a lot to go through. I've got a special guest speaker as well that's going to be tuning in here with us just a moment in a moment. And so um, I want you guys to know that that uh, this loan program can't uh, smaller than two hundred thousand dollars. If your loan amount is smaller than two hundred thousand, it can be approved without also a personal guarantee. So you don't have to personally guarantee it, and they're also not requiring any real estate as collateral. And you could take a general security interest in a business property, right? So pretty amazing that they've got all this available for you right now. And so if I was you, I would jump on this in a heartbeat so you can get that money at such a low rate. Now here, this paragraph, it's like mind blowing. I mean, we really had to do some serious uh, research and, and confirm this with different attorneys, with the SBA, with different federal agencies, but this is real. I mean, I'm just gonna, this is gonna be mind blowing for you right now. So you, as a business owner, a sole proprietor, okay, you can receive right now $10,000 in an emergency grant, right? It's a cash advance grant that can be forgiven, meaning that you don't even have to pay it back. It's spent on paid leave. In other words, like you, you can't even write business. You can't do business. You're literally confined to your home because that's what the rule is. In fact, if you get caught on the streets where it's not an essential travel purpose, where you're going to the grocery store, or if you're going to the hospital, if you can't explain that to the law enforcement agency, uh, you, you know, your citation is like $1,200, like $1,000 or $1,200. It's a lot. And so 
if you're sitting at home and you're not, your business can't be conducted through digital video conferencing or whatever, uh, you would have paid leave, maintaining payroll, increased costs due to supply chain disruption, mortgage or lease payments, or even repaying obligations that cannot be met due to revenue loss, which I can tell you that almost everybody's got some sort of revenue loss. Right now, it's a $10,000 emergency grant. So every single one of you, like right now, boom, you, you've got $10,000 that you can apply for. And if you have not applied for this, I don't know what else you're waiting for. I mean, people are calling me. I, I'm not the federal government, right? And I'm not the bank. And so I'm not going to give you $10,000 and an emergency cash advance grant, but you can apply for this right now. And I, man, uh, just dialing in today, you're, you're $10,000 richer today. So I just want you to realize that there's a lot more available, more programs coming out to help you guys on your way. So very, very important. And again, uh, this it expands access to sole proprietorship, so you don't have to be a major corporation, S Corp, C Corp, LLC. It's even for what independent contractors. So if you're an independent contractor, boom, you just got 10 grand. You've got to apply for this. It's free money from the government if you are a business owner, as well as tribal businesses, co-ops, and ESOs with uh, fewer than 500 employees, and also any kind of 501 type uh, age, uh, institution. So by the way, if I stop this webinar right now, I would tell you guys, boom, go and start applying for this $10,000 uh, emergency cash grant. It is real. It's not a joke. It's not some hoax. This is available for you right now. And in fact, uh, uh, I know that my staff applied th for this program for our businesses and the companies that we also own. Okay. Now, just so you guys know, the, these programs, none of the things that I'm, I'm talking to you about today applies to uh, CBD business or the hemp industry. So if you have anything to do with CBD or hemp, uh, you're going to have to get uh, loan or loan programs and financing somewhere else because the federal government has not approved that. Those state agencies, uh, certain states where CBD is legal, you could probably go get some grants from them, uh, but the federal government is saying, nope, we're only doing it for any business, any business other than uh, CBD or hemp. Just FYI. Uh, now, here's also what's cool. There are no loan fees. There's no fees to get into this program. There's no guaranteed fees. Uh, there's no prepayment fees. There's nothing. So it's pretty cool. Now, here's a couple little contingencies is that you have to have been in business by January 31st, 2020 to qualify. So for those people who started a business this year in January, boom, you, you, you can go and get this program, $10,000 right now, free money. I mean, how, how good does it get? So if you're uh, in any of these uh, eligible, as a typo, eligible, uh, anyway, Eligible. Okay, never mind. Uh, any of these counties or contiguous counties, you qualify for this program, and so I would jump on this right away. Um, I listed some stuff here for you guys, things that they're going to want from you, like insurance information, financial, your EIN number, that's your, your uh, corporation uh, uh, tax ID. If you have any of that, those are quite things that they're going to ask for, so just have it ready to put on your application. So um, again, go to the sba.gov forward slash disaster, and uh, we've got a question here real fast. Can you use it to pay for yourself? Yeah, I mean, someone said, can you use this money to pay yourself? Absolutely. If you are an employee of your own company, absolutely. If you're a sole proprietor, independent contractor, and you're, you're, you're uh you know, you're running a business as a sole proprietor. Absolutely. If you're an Uber driver, right? Uh, you're what's the one they deliver food. What's that one called? Grubhub. Yeah. Grubhub or whatever it is. Uh, those are also available. You're an independent contractor. And as an independent contractor, you qualify for these programs. So jump on it, right? What's that song? Jump on it. Jump on. All right, here we go. Back to this. 
So now let's talk about this economic stimulus package that everybody has been watching on TV. It's the two, what, how much is it? $2 trillion uh, uh, economic stimulus package. They're called it the, the CARES Act, CARES. This is the acronym. CARES is not like, you know, the government cares. <laughs> well, I'm sure they do care. That's why they're coming out with that. But it's an acronym, right? It's, it's the Coronavirus Aid relief and economic security act so that's what this is all called uh that's why they call it the cares act so let's talk about cares now cares act is different than this sba that i just talked about you can actually get both you can get sba and you can also get cares it's not like one or the other you can actually have both okay so that's pretty cool both so talking about some of these things in terms of the recovery rebates um, these are refundable income tax credits against your 2020 income. If you're filing joint, uh, marry $2,400. Uh, if you're single, uh, $1,200 or for all other filers. And then the credit increases up to $500 for each child a tax paper, taxpayer has on their age of 17. And so these are some of the reasons because you know, I was planning on things like this happening in the future, and this is why I have four kids, so I can get this tax credit, right? No, I'm kidding. It's not the reason. Um, I just love my kids, and that's why we had our kids, but not because of these tax credits. And by the way, unfortunately, um, if you make too much money, your AGI, adjusted gross income, if, it's, uh, if you're married and you're making, you know, more than 150 or you're head of, ho head of household at 112000 you almost you don't qualify for these programs. So, unfortunately, for certain people who make too much money, you don't qualify for these plans, and it's really available for others that are within that income threshold. Um, by the way, you do need to have a social security number. Without a social security number, this doesn't qualify, all right? And now let's talk about the coronavirus distribution. Now this is pretty amazing, right? I've never seen this in my entire life. 30 years in this industry, and I've never seen anything like this. Now penalty free. So I mentioned to you guys earlier that if you have IRAs, 401k, uh, 457, if you've got um, uh, any kind of retirement type qualified plan, uh, Roth IRA, whatever, whatever you want to call it, SEP IRAs. So here's what's cool. You could take money out of those plans up to $100,000 without the penalty fee, right? If you've been diagnosed with COVID or your spouse or a dependent child or someone who's dependent on you has, has been diagnosed with COVID-19, you can actually take a penalty-free distribution out of those plans right now. And, uh, and also, for people who don't have COVID, have, have been diagnosed, if you're experiencing adverse financial consequences, I mean, that's what the legal language is, adverse financial consequences from, i.e., quarantine. Have, have we all been quarantined? Absolutely, right? Now I know why dogs get so excited when they want to go take a walk, right? I mean, they want to get the hell out of the house, and so uh, now we know why they get so excited to go on a walk, because, man, we're all living and we've been confined to our home, and so we've all been quarantined. If you've been furloughed, laid off, reduced hours due to the coronavirus, or you're unable to work due to the lack of childcare, and you're having to now watch your kids because you got your one, two, three, four, five, six, eight kids sitting at home, and now you're having to homeschool them, do their homework with them. You're getting all these webinars with your kids at school. Uh, man, it's a lot of work. And so if you're experiencing any of this stuff, you can take up to $100,000 out of your uh, retirement account without the penalty. Now, so you are exempt from this penalty. Now, here's the thing is that you do have to pay the income tax, right? So whatever your state or federal income tax is, you are gonna have to pay the income tax. Now, here's the good news is, um, you can pay this income tax over a three-year period, right? So let's just take, for instance, you had, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. You took all, you took the entire hundred thousand dollars out, which, um, you know, if you if you can afford it, why not? If you even have that much money in your account, take it out and avoid the penalties. I would take that money out of that uh, account right now, to, uh, so you avoid paying the ten percent. There'll be no mandatory withholding. So when you ask for that money. 
Typically, they hold a percentage of your money to pay for the taxes that you may not pay for. So they do mandatory withholdings. But in this example, uh, you, you know, in this case, you do not have any mandatory withholdings. And if you were, in, let's say, you know, you're paying 20% in taxes, you could take that 20% and then you divide it over three years and, you know, pay taxes on that over a three-year period. So pretty amazing. I, I've never in my entire life seen anything like this. So for them to come out so quickly and offer this program to you, this is absolutely remarkable. Now, what else can certain people do? Well, they can take this money and fund uh, other plans, right? They can go put money uh, in IULs. And you're like, well, what's an IUL? Well, that's another uh, webinar. We'll talk about that on another day. But pretty amazing right here <clears throat> that you can do this. Other provisions here um, for people that are having the mandatory requirement, they, they call this required mandatory or minimum distribution, and these are waived for 2020. And so some people say, well, wait a second, I already pulled the money out to do, you know, some of the people that are 70 and a half years of age and older, they had to take some mandatory distributions, and here's the good news, is the government is basically saying, you can put the money back into your account. Now, a lot of people say, well, what would be the purpose of that uh, for the elderly, you know, if they're 70 and a half and older, well, then uh, the benefit is you don't have to pay any income tax on that. So you may want to put that money back in and not take that mandatory distribution. <clears throat> Also, for those people that have DB uh, accountants defined benefit or uh, DC defined contribution plans, uh, these are huge. If you have no idea what I'm talking about here, you really need to reach out to me and, and let me explain to you the tax benefit of having a defined benefit or defined contribution plan. But you now have until January 1st, 2021 to fund those, which is pretty amazing. Okay. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, but it's pretty cool that you can actually do that. Let me go back as um, someone just texted me and said, could you stop for one brief second so they can take a picture of it? So there you go, take a picture of that. And we have a question. If your child is 18 years old and college student, do you get $500 for them? Yeah, if, if your child is 18 and they're still dependent on you, then yeah, they can, you could still take that deduction, right? So they're full-time students and they're not making any money, they can definitely, you could still um, uh, take that deduction. What's the other question? Is there a minimum income needed for SBA loans? Is there a minimum income? And there is no minimum income. So if you're a small business, you're making 50 grand, go get a, go get a loan, right? They'll, they'll give it to you according to your income. So, I mean, money is money, right? Even if they send you 1,500 bucks, uh, that's $1,500 that, that you can pay over 30 years and uh, if you want to. And, and you're getting it at 3.75 if you're just a business and not a, a nonprofit organization. Or another one? Can you go back two slides about how CARES Act works? Uh, yeah, I'll go back two slides. Um, how CARE works right here. Is this the one? Uh, oh, that, well, that's the first slide, so here you go. So take a picture of that right there, you guys. <clears throat> So take a picture of that, and then uh, I've got a lot to cover, and we've got a, a short amount of time. I'm just looking at my clock here, making sure we're on time. All right, here we go. I'm going to go to the next slide, take a picture of this. Okay, and so the reason uh, uh, this is so important for you guys, uh, I'm sharing this information not only for your own benefit, but I think it's extremely important that you reach out to other business owners, right, and say, oh, my gosh, do I have some amazing news to share with you? So this is kind of like, God, I hate to put it this way. I mean, our, our world is at a crisis, but hey, business stuff goes on. I mean, people need advice and people need direction. And if you're sharing with people this kind of information and giving them some guidance, you should be compensated, right, for whatever else product you're selling, other ancillary products. Okay, go ahead and take a picture of this as well. And then I'm going to move on. Oops, let me go back. Uh, there you are. Take that um, picture of that slide. And all right, cool. Now we're moving on. Uh, now, for those of you that have children or no kids who have student loans, uh, this is pretty cool right here, guys. 
Uh, student loans deferred until September 30th, 2020. No, no loan repayments, right? No penalties, uh, no interest accruing. This is pretty cool. They're deferring it all the way until September 30th, 2020, which is pretty amazing news. Uh, 2020 is ignored for purposes of five-year rule for non-designated beneficiaries. This only is really relevant if you are an inheritance, uh, if you're a beneficiary and you're receiving an inheritance through some of these uh, accounts. And that's these are a little more um, detailed, and I don't want to spend too much time on that. I'm going to move on. So uh, here's what's really cool. For those of you that are collecting unemployment, uh, they bumped that unemployment check up to $600 a week, and the benefit period has been extended by another 13 weeks. So, that, I mean, that, that's pretty darn cool, right? I mean, uh, hey, free money, right? It's just extra money. You didn't ask for it, but they gave you a bump. So uh, they're doing some amazing things here to really help business owners, and I'll, and I'll stop there so you guys take a picture of that. Okay, let's move on. Um, okay, now this is uh, small business benefits here. Certain small businesses can qualify for small business loans up to a maximum of $10 million. Can you imagine that? Or two and a half times your average payroll cost to cover payroll. So basically, at this point, I mean, people should not be getting laid off, right? People should not be asked to, you know, send their people home uh, uh, on furlough and all that kind of stuff. They need to be kept on payroll because all these amazing programs are coming out and the, really to benefit the employers to make sure that they're taking care of their employees, all right? <clears throat> so... Um, So I already kind of talked about this earlier. It's very similar to the CARE plan, and this is part of the SBA program and the CARE program. They're both the same, and the guidelines are very similar in terms of non-payment up to 12 months. Uh, you know, they got certain amortizations, but with this particular loan, um, they're actually doing it over five years where the SBA loan is over 30 years. So that, that's a big difference right there for you to consider. Okay. Um, also, there is something called the Paycheck um, Protection Program Loan Guarantee. So the SBA now is backing up small business uh, loans through local lenders. So there are a lot of different banks. There's over 1,800 lenders that plan to expand that given anticipated demand. You know that there'll be more banks and lenders getting added to this so that you can go and get money, and this is just through a bank that you can get this program for, okay? Um, again, this is for anybody who is self-employed, sole proprietors, freelance, right? Uh, and gig economy workers are also eligible, eligible to apply, and you have to be in operation before February 15, 2020 to get this kind of loan. So it's, it's a different kind of program, but again, this is available at all your banks. Pretty much all, my, all the major banks are offering this program. So I hope you're taking notes so you know what, what we're talking about here. So, so far we talked about the SBA, right? The Economic Disaster Relief Program. We talked about the CARE Act, and now we're talking about the Paycheck um, uh, Protection Program Loan Guarantee. So we got three different programs. One is through the SBA, one through the federal government, and one through uh, your banks. So different places to go and get different kind of loans. So pretty, pretty exciting, all right? Pretty exciting. All right. Mm, that's good stuff. All right, what am I drinking? No, I'm not drinking water. I'm drinking the good stuff right here, you know? His name is Jack, all right? Jack Daniels from Tennessee. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, moving on. I'm kidding. I just, that was, I don't know. That must be Raul's. I don't even know why that's on my table right now. <laughs> oh, God, it's great. All right, here we go. Um, as we said, no personal guarantees, no collateral for this program either. Payments are, uh, for these are um, up to 6 to 12 months. And part of the loan can be forgiven. Now, that, that's pretty cool, right? So this is, again, different than that $10,000 grant program that you can get. So, uh, again, take a picture of that. 
pretty, pretty cool. Kind of redundant. That last paragraph right there is redundant from the first one. So, um, So again, we're going back to that $10,000 advance. Uh, loan forgiveness provisions are generous. Loans are forgiven when the proceeds are used for any of these. Payroll, rent, electricity, gas, transportation, telephone, uh, internet, expenses for service, which began before April 15th, group health insurance premiums, and other health care costs. So as I'm telling you, jump on it, jump on it. All right, so those are different ways that you can uh, get some money immediately. Some people said, well, you know, you hear all these stuff, like people saying, um, well, start your own business. I mean, I, I see, like, people on Instagram and, and uh, Facebook, they're telling, you know, people, you know, forget a job, you know, you got to have your own business, start a business. Well, you know, I get the whole, you know, rah, rah, and all the advertising and telling everybody to be an entrepreneur right now. But come on, folks, you, you all know that if you're going to become an entrepreneur today and start a business, you don't start making money like the day you open, right? I mean, you start, it's going to take time for you to ramp up your business and, you know, you're going to start to spend money to go and start a business or whatever else it is. So uh, I just tell people, look, take advantage of these loan programs right now, right? I love the idea of you becoming an entrepreneur, solopreneur right now, and you're trying to get really creative and very innovative in your home and, and you're starting a business, but that's not going to help pay your bills next week, right, or in the next two weeks. So I would take advantage of these kind of programs. And I want to just let you guys know, like my opinion on what's going on in the economy right here, uh, let, let's go take a glance over the last 90 years years of bulls and bears, right? So in the last 90 years, here's what's going on. Let's go back to the 30s here for a second and what was going on in the 1930s. It was the Great Depression, folks, right? So if you're looking at my cursor right here, you'll see that the market's gone up and now all of a sudden the market went down, the market went back up, it went down, it went up, it went down, it went up. And you can see if you had $1,000 invested on January 1st, 1930 to the end of 1939, $1,000, you can see, you know, other than being in this, this one line here, uh, that's your aggressive growth. Everything else was up. It was above over a 10-year period, okay? Now, get this. Unemployment rates, if you look at my cursor, right, uh, was 18.23%. Uh, so that was back in the 30s, man. We had unemployment rates at 18%. So a lot of people have been saying uh, on, on Facebook and Instagram, again, it's all fake news, which really pisses me off of how many people are, like, trying to make this uh, crisis right now as if they're saying this is worse than the Great Depression. Folks, this is not worse than the Great Depression. I mean, people are oblivious to what the Great Depression was like, right? So unemployment was almost, you know, 18, 20% back then. We're, we're not at 18%, okay? And uh, th 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 let's not compare this to the Great Depression. The Great Depression was, was really bad, okay? 40s, 1940s, an economy spurred by wars, okay? Unemployment here, 5.17. You can see this above. The S&P 500 at 9.17 right here, okay? And you can see, again, $1,000 invested market went up, down, up, and went up, and went down. The market's now climbing back up. And you can see that in almost every asset class, whether it's income, conservative, moderate growth, aggressive growth, all of these different asset classes did well over a 10-year period, and this is in the 1940s, okay? The S&P 500, and if you don't know what that S&P 500 means, the S&P 500 is uh, 500 of the largest domestic companies, right? And if you go to Google, type in top 500, um, excuse me, top S&P, or list of S&P 500 companies, it'll list all the different companies in there, Amazon, Google, all the big names that you know. Uh, those are the 500, and those 500 companies did an average of 9, 10% right here. So it kind of gives you an idea what happened in the 40s. The 50s were the Eisenhower years. Again, unemployment down here, 4.51. Check out the S&P 500 here, 19.35. Okay, so this did pretty well in the 1950s, okay? Now, in the 60s, 
unemployment, 4.78. We call this conformity gives way to social revolution. That was the 1960s. S&P 500, 7.81. 1970s, energy crisis sparks economic crisis. Unemployment, 6.21. Uh, S&P 500, 5.86. Again, we went up and we did this huge crash down here, and then we went back up, and you can see at the end of that, we did pretty well, okay? And believe it or not, our conservative portfolios and our income funds actually did pretty good. Uh, our conservative growth funds up here did pretty well. This is the Reaganomics, the 1980s, unemployment at 7.27. Look at this, uh, 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 S&P 500 at 17.55. So we did pretty well in the 1980s, okay? And then we go to the 1990s. In the 1990s, the longest bull market in history, right? Unemployment is at 5.77. Uh, S&P 500 18.2%. Now, by the way, these are all numbers that are audited. These are compliant. Uh, this has been um, numbers that we, uh, these are approved numbers, and was, we're not making these things up. Okay, this is real. This isn't the stuff that we're seeing in all the crap on, on the Internet, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, the fake news out there. Hey, let me just tell you where, where, where i got to tell you guys, okay? One thing you could all do right now is stop watching the news, okay? You're all watching the news, and as you're watching the news, man, I, I, I told you over and over and over and over, as you sit there and watch the news, man, yeah, of course you're going to feel like it's the apocalypse. It's like 24-7, nonstop, right, where they're telling you how many people have died, how many people have coronavirus, right? This, this uh, conspiracy theory where this thing all got started, where it was like a it was like a weapon of mass destruction. It was like a biological weapon that started in China. And uh, it's like, it's crazy, man. And, and you know what blows my mind is how the media is not talking about all the people who are recovering from the coronavirus, right? Think about how many people. What you may want to do is go to World World, W-O-R-L-D-O, -O, World O Meter, M-E-T-E-R-S, Right, P plural dot the org, right? Dot, huh? Info. Oh, it's dot .info. So you go to worldometers.info, and you can click it and see all the numbers. You'll actually see how many people actually got the coronavirus, how many people recovered, how many people died, how many people are still in the hospital. You know what, the, you know what blows my mind is that they're not talking about all the people who recovered. Look at all the NBA basketball players who got, you know, allegedly or has the coronavirus, and uh, – they're all, they've all been uh, cured or, or they've recovered, and yet the media is not talking about any of them. How about, uh, uh, what's his name, Tom Hanks? Excuse me, Tom Hanks. Him and his wife had the coronavirus, and they're not talking about how they recovered, right? I mean, they talked for two, three days how they had the uh, corona, that the coronavirus is attacking all these, a, excuse me, A-list celebrities. And guess what, man? They, they're... They're recovered and they're doing better now, okay? So uh, don't listen uh, uh, to this. I mean, some of you guys are, no, I'm not trying to say don't self-quarantine. Let's not be a, a, a contributor to, you know, spreading this virus and affecting the elderly and the people who have pre-existing conditions, right? Let's do our part and self-quarantine uh, for, for their life, okay, and to not spread this. But, um Man, I just wish they would, you know, that they would equally share, you know, what is really going on, and at the same time that there is some upside and the people are recovering from this. And by the way, if you start to read that they're now starting to show that if you take a Z pack, um, uh, if you take a Z pack and there's another one that it's a drug that they use for malaria, that if you take these two, they're now starting to show signs around the world in different places that um, that uh, they're starting to see signs of recovery because of these two drugs. And so, look, there's hope out there, man. It's not the end of the world. So, um, 
So anyway, here's Reaganomics. We went back. I guess somebody wanted to see this page. Um, this is the 1990s. And here's now in the 2000. The world greets a new millennium, right? The new millennium. Here again, unemployment rate 5.5. Uh, uh, 2000 was not a good year, right? I mean, you know, here we are at uh, the S&P 500 actually doing negative, you know, over the last. So if we go here, 18%, 17, 5, 7, 19, 9, right? The last time we saw negative was during the Great Depression, and now here we come to the 2000s, a new millennium, and this decade was not a good year, right? And now, guess what? In the 10s, the I generation engages in a global transformation, unemployment at 6.22, S&P 500 at 13.56, okay? So here, we just gave you a summary of the 90 years of bulls and bears, and so uh, let me just tell you, we've, we've experienced this before. Let me tell you what I mean by this. Here's the 90 years as a big picture, all the ups and downs, $1,000 over 90 years going up and down, up and down, and where do you see this thing going? Can you imagine if you had $1,000 invested in the S&P 500 over the last 90 years, you know your account balance would be worth four and a half million dollars in an aggressive growth portfolio i mean that's just mind-blowing so this is why a certain people on social media says don't invest in stocks don't invest in the s p 500 well and here's my opinion nonsense right absolute nonsense okay so i would tell you to be in, engaged and go and buy stocks, get and buy mutual funds, and more importantly is to go into some sort of guaranteed product where there's an S&P 500 uh, index involved, okay, S&P 500. Let me give you here 90 years in kind of a summary uh, bear uh, markets may be brutal versus, but bulls have a tendency to charge back. So let me give you an example. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go on every line, but you can kind of see here, January uh, 1960 to October 1960 lasted 10 months, negative 17, but in October to December 14 months uh, did 29.8. Right? I mean, look at this down here. Uh, July 1990. Okay, it lasted three months, uh, down 21.2. October 1990 to 1998, 294% return on your money. Right? So um, we've experienced this, folks. Right? So I tell people, I said, tough, tough times never last, but but tough people do, right? Tough times never last, but tough people do. And you've seen this post, people are posting it on Instagram, they're posting it on Facebook, but let me just tell you what I mean by that. Okay, just to give you an idea, when we have had a, a negative 5% or more market decline, the average frequency lasted about three, uh, about three times per year. The length of it was 43 days. And the last time we had this uh, experience was pretty recent, August 2019. Uh, if we had 10% or more market loss, it happens about once every year, 112 days uh, is how long it lasts. December 2018, pretty recent, right? Uh, negative 15% or more in the S&P 500. Average lasted 262 days, happens once every four years. Um, last time it happened, December 2018. Uh, more than 20% or more, happens about every six years, uh, lasted 401 days. So do I think that we're gonna recover um, out of this negative thing uh, anytime soon? Uh, no, but here's what I do know. What a great time to buy, right? So you would want to buy now and know that everything is kind of like got a blue light special. And you know that o over this what next 401 days, we know that that market is going to rebound just based on the last 90 years of history and going back and looking at what we're, um, what we've experienced, right? So, uh, in terms of the Wuhan virus, and here, look, here's the Nile virus right here, right? Here's SARS, and then here's the bird flu, here's the swine flu, here's MERS, here's Ebola, here's Zika, and now here, we've had a pretty good run all the way up, and yeah, we're, we're experiencing now the Wuhan virus, okay, or the coronavirus, okay? So uh, this is not the first time we've experienced some sort of a viral outbreak. I mean, we've experienced this in the past. I've, I've been around for this long, folks. It's scary. I, I remember when this came out. I remember when this came out. This and this and this. And folks, I've, 
I, I've been around since 1991 in this industry, and I know exactly uh, what all the different economic trends have been. And so, no, I'm not paranoid right now. I don't think it's the world apocalypse. This is not the financial crisis. Um, we are going to recover through all this, and it's it's just. But I I, I don't think it's going to last the, like the whole three three and a half years like the economic crisis. Okay, just just my opinion. Okay, I don't have the crystal ball, but I'm just based on what I've experienced with all these other outbreaks and other funny, other crises. Uh, I, I see us coming out of this sooner than we did in the economic crisis of 09 and 10. So where can you put your money right now? Let's go over some index annuities here. Uh, contrary to what you may think or heard or some people are telling you about, you know, uh, index annuities, whether they're bad or good, uh, let me just tell you something. I think they're great products, right? And here's why. The reason why I like them is because, one, low minimum investments, right, low barriers to entry, $10,000. Here's what's really cool. A lot of people said, I'm down 20% of the market. Well, when, if you put in any dollar amount, so if you put in 100 grand, this company, Athene, through this product called the Agility 10, will give you a 20% bonus up front. So it kind of helps you offset some of your market loss. And what they'll do is they'll tie it to the S&P 500, and give you 175%. So what does that mean? So if the S&P 500 does 10%, you actually get back 17.5. Now, some people said, well, I really don't want to be in the S&P 500 because I disagree with you, John. I don't think the S&P 500 is going to rebound anytime soon. I think it's going to be three or four years down the road. Well, I, I, well, that's your opinion. I totally disagree. But uh, if that's the case, then why don't you be, or put your money here? Same $10,000, you get your 20% up front, and then guess what? You have 10% simple interest for 10 years, 10 years, guaranteed. There's no market, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the market does, it's irrelevant. Where will you go today and get 20% up front on your money and get 10% guaranteed simple interest for the next 10 years? This is uh, unprecedented, folks. This is an opportunity for you to jump on and learn more about these products, okay? And if you're going, oh, my God, I want to know more about these things, then here's what I want you to do. You can reach out to me, okay, or reach out to the person who told you to jump on this webinar tonight and say, hey, listen, you know, John was talking about those bonuses where you get 20% up front, you get 10% guaranteed. I want to know more about it. Can you send me some literature and make sure you connect with those people? All right, very important you do that. And these are some alternative options. We're just giving you five different options. If I was you, take out your phone and take a screenshot of this right here because this is, um, it took a lot of time for us to put this together for you. Uh, you know, we had to get all the brochures, all the literature, dissect the information, put it on this uh, grid, and have it available for you. So make sure you uh, take a photo of this here. All right, moving on. Now let's talk about time wasters, right? These are the things that you should be not doing right now. So enough of the economy, enough of the financial stuff. Let's talk about your mindset and what you're doing with your time. So 10 uh, time wasters. Number one, um, waiting for inspiration. Stop waiting for inspiration and be the inspiration, okay? Why don't you get creative and start doing some things at your house? We'll talk about that momentarily. Uh, worrying about what people will say about you or your act actions or your activities, right? Complaining, right? Stop blaming, okay, and stop complaining. This is not President Trump's fault. This is not Obama's fault. It's not Clinton's fault. It's not Reagan's fault. Man, and, and it's not your governor's fault. Everybody's pointing fingers. Like, they're saying, you know, President Trump, like, what? I mean, do you think that Trump or Obama or any of these people or the, the, they were in a factory creating this, uh, this coronavirus? Uh, let me just tell you something right now. The idea that people actually believe that this is a manufacturing virus, right, is, or some conspiracy theory, it's nonsense, right? Now all these scientists are coming out saying that they're researching the cells and they're understanding that this is just a different strand of the coronavirus, which we've known about the coronavirus, and that it is a natural evolution of this virus getting stronger, okay? So, um, so let's stop complaining, all right? It's not going to serve you. Trying to please everybody, all right? Comparing yourself to other people. Right? Oh my God, I wonder what he's doing. I wonder what she's doing. Uh, what are you worried about what other people are doing? Why don't you worry about 
what you're doing right now with your time, confined to your home, okay? Um, repeating the same mistakes, right? So uh, number seven, perfectionism. Everything you got to do is be perfect before you even, you know, take a, uh, take a shot at it. Number eight, lack of priorities and knowing your priorities. Number nine, the fear of failure. And number 10, not living your life. Folks, uh, this is the time to be living your life and understanding that you are experiencing history and all the things that you're going through right now that you should be documenting to prepare for the future, right? Right? Because this is not going to be the only time now that we're experiencing some sort of an outbreak. I, I guarantee you, unfortunately, we are going to have another outbreak in the future. And when that does, I hope you're prepared um, for that. Um, so here's, uh, I love this quote, right? It says here, bad habits are like a comfortable bed, easy to get into, but hard to get out of, right? So you guys are all creatures of habit right now, and you're at home, and you're going crazy because you're a creature of habit. You're doing the same thing you've been doing your entire life, getting up, showering, putting on your makeup, your clothes, getting in your car, driving on the freeway, same lane, getting off the same exit, parking in the same spot, working at the same desk. This has been your life for so long that you're sitting at home, and you're saying, I'm bored. I don't know what to do this is outrageous and you're actually now going out there into the public you know you're 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 you're, you're exposing and, and potentially uh becoming uh um somewhat a spreader right where you're spreading because you may be asymptomatic and and not helping out this viral outbreak so uh but it's a time for you to change your habits in fact one reason that people resist change or habits is because they focus on what they have to give up instead of what they have to gain. So I want you to know that right now, if you change your habits now, like what better time to start exercising, right? What better time, and we're going to talk about some of the things that you should be doing at your home right now, is a good friend of mine, his name is Steve Sambles, who is the creator and CEO of something called the One Habit Series, who's got an amazing book, bestseller, and I'm absolutely fired up and thrilled to have him on this call with us and uh and he's going to give you some insight on habits and what you need to do with uh breaking some of your habits so without any further ado what an amazing entrepreneur he is very very successful and um, and it was just interesting that you know every time me and steve get a chance to uh talk on the phone i mean he's busy he's super like super super busy super articulate and i meet a lot of impressive people and i'll tell you what he's one of the sharpest guys i've ever met super articulate i mean his temperament everything about him i'm just absolutely uh grateful to have him um as a friend as a business partner and i know that we're gonna be doing some big things together so without any further ado steve are you there John, I'm with you. How are you? Oh, we're doing great. Do we have them on video or how, how are we doing here? If you start my okay, video, so I'm available. Okay. Yeah, I think your video needs to get turned on on the bottom. On the very bottom, it just click that. It says stop video or start video. Yes, yeah, so we so should see you. Start on. video. Uh, can't uh, start video because the host has stopped it. Let me see here. Okay. One of you guys have to undo it on your side. Oh, you have to click on it. Hang on. Oh, you know what I think I got to do is I got to get out of mine. Hang on. We should both be able to be on the same time, I would think. Yeah. Make his co-host. Make his co-host. There you go. I'm now a co-host. And there you, you are. Keep up and there out. we go. Hey, Bill. Hey, buddy. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. First of all, I got to tell you, um, I really loved – what you just showed us. Um, I had, you know, I started as a stockbroker in the early 90s. And one of the things I was, it was very important to me was asset allocation, because I would always tell my investors, there's never been a 10 year period in the market where stocks didn't do well, right? And right. you really just laid it out perfectly. And, um, and to the conversation we're talking about that people are at home right now. And so many people are destroying their habits, John. And it's just, yeah. it's killing me. 
And and um, I, here's here's one example. See this right here? Put this on. You know, I I've got people I'm talking to that I'm doing business with, and I'm on I'm on a video conference with them, and they're sitting in a sweatshirt, and and, and I'm going, dude, I every time I've ever seen you, you're you're in a suit and tie. And he goes, well, you know, I'm going, no, because you realize when this is over with, putting that suit and tie on is going to be harder for you than it was before. And so what you need to do is, everybody, the men, women out there, you need to wake up in the morning like you used to. Go take your shower, br brush your teeth, you know, shave, do your hair if you're a lady, put on your makeup, and then prepare for your day. Because there's very few things, guys, that we cannot do at home that we do at the office. You especially, and all the people who work for you, John, every one of them can work from home. A lot of them do, am I right? That's right. And so, so um, what I wanted to talk to you guys about, okay, first of all, uh, a little background on the book. We started the first One Habit book uh, last year. It came out in July of last year, and it was literally going to be only one book. I had this idea in my head. I was at uh, Greg Reed's Secret Knock, this amazing conference. And uh, I was videotaping the conference for Greg, and we had this breakout time. And I said, you know something? I would be really interested in just taking the camera and going to these presenters, like you know Frank Shankwitz, who started the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the guy who invented the magnetic strip on the back of your credit card, all these people, uh, great entrepreneurs, and just ask them about their habits. I want to see if there's something there. So I went up to each person, and I said, if you could instantly instill in a child one habit, what would it be and why? And I was amazed. We did 30 of these. Two things amazed me. Number one, the habits didn't repeat because I thought it'd be the same habit for everybody. Second thing was, is these people not only knew what their habit was, the most important habit they owned, but they were passionate about it. And that was something that really blew me away. And that gave me the idea that eventually became the book. We took 100 people. We asked them all the same question, put them in the first one habit book. Came out in July, became an Amazon bestseller became a best-selling author, was a best-selling book in three categories, and it blew up. But here's what happened. The author started coming to me, and uh, we talked about this too. They said, Steve, I like this one habit concept. Can we take this and turn it into something more? Can we take this and do one habit for to beat cancer? One habit for women action takers? One habit for a thriving home office? And we took the process right now, we have 20 books that we're in the middle of working on. We have over a thousand contributors in these 20 books. And all this all came, John, from that one single book and that one day doing those interviews. It's amazing how one little thing in your life can expand to become some something so enormous, something huge. Mm-hmm. And so you what um now, you're, are you going to program? Are you going to be doing something to teach people how to write their own book? Because you are self-published, self-written, and you've got all these different books out now. What, what, um, what, what do you got in terms of plans of sharing your knowledge with everybody else? So what we're going to do is, first of all, we have a website. It's the number one, onehabit.com. What we're going to do is, when I was doing the first book, I was going to go the normal publishing route. I had a literary agent that we're going to take into publishing houses. And the first thing he said to me is, you know what, Steve, I just want to let you know, you're not going to make any money on this at all. I go, what are you talking about? This is why you do books. Publishing is a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar, maybe a trillion dollar industry. It's where everybody learns. It's a knowledge business. He goes, as a writer, you're not going to make any money. So I looked at this whole publishing concept and because I, I, I knew so little about it, I decided to just kind of turn it on its, on its butt. And I decided to self-publish. And within that short amount of time, the nine months that we got to the point of the idea of the first one habit book to publishing, I opened up our own publishing house. We now have distribution around the whole world. We're in every library system in the world. We're in 180 locations in bookstores where they can walk in and say, I would like this book and it's printed for them and beautifully bound in 10 minutes. It's called the Espresso Book Machine. So you and I have talked about this what we're going to do is we're putting together a mastermind program that will teach people how to publish their own book, how to take the knowledge that's inside of them, because it, the whole essence of my company is to find brilliant minds and give them a voice, give them a platform to tell their story. So through a mastermind program, which we're going to do, we're going to show people from the very beginning how to take your idea, 
how to put form to it, how to lay it out, what tools to use, how to get international distribution, how to sell it, and how to become a best-selling book. We are going to do that. We're in the process right now of putting it together. You and I have spoke about it, and I think it'll be a game changer for a lot of people, especially right now, because people have so much time right now, they could literally take three days. I wrote a book um, on Friday. No, it was on Thursday, and it was on Amazon on Friday selling. I did it one day just to see if I could do it. And so it's, and it's amazing. And here's the thing, by the way, not only do you make money when you publish and you, and you, and you create a book, but there's something about being a best-selling author that opens doors for you, John, that you would, that would right. never open to you before. And I'm talking about not just as a speaker or, or an author, I'm talking about, let's say you're, um, you're, a, uh, you're a financial planner, you're an insurance rep, you're a stockbroker, whatever you, you're a lawyer, whatever you might be. When you could hand somebody your book, it puts you on a different level completely. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we'll, we'll uh, let everybody know and we're going to put that mastermind together. Um, what are some things that people can do right now in terms of um, breaking their habits? Uh, what, what can they do right now as they're sitting at their home and some of these people are bored, they don't know what to do. What are some things they could do to break their habits than the norm, like going into the office and all that kind of stuff? A couple of nuggets. Do you have anything you could share? I, I do. Uh, the first and the biggest one is something that's right in front of our faces, John, and all of us ignore it. All of us don't notice it. And that is the fact that I used to have 3,000 friends on Facebook and 97% of them were strangers. And I think mm. a lot of us, when you look at your Facebook feed, you'll see this face that you've never seen before. And you'll see his post right. talking about whatever he's doing. And you don't know this guy or this girl, right? So I created right. a habit that I use 10 minutes a day that, now this was derived by the way, out of a call that Mark Victor Hansen, the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, he, 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 he named this my 30 second irresistible cold call. And when I was a stockbroker, this is what I did. I had 800 numbers that I would call. And I'd say, hi, I'm Steve Samblis. The reason I'm calling is I have a terrific tax-free bond shielding 8%. I thought you'd be interested. And I shut up. If they say yes, I say, if you like the idea, it requires a minimum investment of 25000 If you like the idea, is that a problem? It's not. I then deliver. And I was opening two to three new accounts a day. So I took that idea and I looked at my Facebook feed. And these are people that asked to be my friends, John. They asked to be my friends. They are my friends. So I wrote a little paragraph. The paragraph basically says, question, I'm publishing the best-selling One Habit book series, and we're looking for amazing new voices to contribute to the book. Is that something you might be interested in? We created a website that talks about the book series and let you know, it will, it will let us know if you see something that resonates with you. Here's the website. Hmm. Would you let me know if you're interested or not? Now, that's the first thing I send that to them. Now, by the way, my friends on Facebook, I want to have something in common with them. And if I don't mm -hmm. want anything in common with them and I'm not communicating, they shouldn't be my friends. So here's what I do. After five days, if they don't answer, I delete them. If I see that they've looked at the message, I just delete them as a friend. Because if they're not going to be polite enough to respond to me, yes or no, they're out. But here's what's been mm -hmm. happening. Every single day, I've been averaging four to five brand new contributors for our books by sending this message out. And these are people that I've never really spoke to before. They're my Facebook strangers. Now they're my friends. Now we're communicating. Some of them said to me, I can't do it right now, Steve, because I'm in the middle of doing this, but let's stay in touch. Now I'm communicating with them. I went from 3,000 to about 2,200 friends on Facebook. I will get to a point where every single person on Facebook will be somebody I communicate with. So here's the habit, every single day, Go to Facebook and rather than just go through it, pause. When you see someone in your feed you don't know, write a little paragraph. Let's say you're in the insurance business, write something about, you know, by the way, do you have insurance? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing if you do, you pay a premium. If I could show you how to reduce your premium dramatically and increase your benefits, could I have five minutes of your time? Do that. Mm, yeah. And so this is a game changer. This is something that all of us can do and I want to tell you what happens. The results are amazing. You get rid of, you start noticing people on your friends feed that you actually know, that you've had a conversation with. That is golden. Yeah. You start making more money. 
I've got more people that are coming in every day in our books now, and they're giving me referrals. That, John, is a game changer. So 10 minutes a day, use this 30-second Facebook warm call, I call it, and that will change your lives, I believe. Mm-hmm. And you were talking about how you're making money, like how you're making money with that kind of stuff and how much right. you're getting paid a day. Maybe about $1,000 a day. That's unbelievable. That's and, I'm not like, spending, and I'm not spending any money on ads. I'm spending zero money on ads. Even better. Yeah. And, I, and I'm, only, I'm only talking to people that ask to be my friend. It's, it, let me tell you what. I feel like it's, it's, it's like, if I, I feel like I was a, I was a friend hoarder and now I'm cleaning this dysfunctional hoarded friends list <laughs> that we've just yeah. been screening more and more of. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's, it's, you know, it's, you guys, it's, it's huge. I hope you guys do that. I hope you guys are going through and as Steve just alluded to making sure just taking a couple minutes a day and just going through your Facebook feed and just responding to these people and why not? Why not reach out to these people about different insurance products, retirement accounts, even all the things that I just shared with you guys today? Are they familiar with the economic stimulus package, right? Are they familiar with the relief, disaster relief? Are they familiar with the, the, uh, um, the uh, employment uh, uh, benefits packages and all the yes. different things that are available today? It's huge, absolutely huge. If and the $10,000 grant. If you're in the yeah, financial the $10, industry. Yeah, the $10,000 grant. You have to do this. You guys have got to do this. Because by the way, you're going like, oh, I don't want to do that. Why? They're, they're, they're clogging up your Facebook feed. They shouldn't belong mm. there. Be protected of that. That's your home. They should only be there if you're communicating with them. They just, then they have the right to talk to you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, uh, Steve, thank you so much. I want to just go back to this page right here. Uh, see, this book is on audio as well. Am I right? Audio comes out in about two weeks. We just submitted to, it'll be on audible.com, on amazon.com, and on iTunes. You're okay. This book. Well, I'll tell you what. Well, I hope all of you guys get this book. It's a great read, and I love it. In fact, I think I'm in one of these books somewhere. You're and, in this one. Huh? You're in that one. Oh, I'm in this one. Yeah, I'm in yes. this one, guys. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, get it. it. It's awesome. All the different ways that you can change your habits. And uh, if you buy the book and you get a chance to meet Steve, which you will, uh, he'll be coming to my house or coming to one of our events and you'll have a book and you'll have an opportunity to have him sign it and get a photo with him. And so, of course, you got all these other books here as well. So pretty awesome. Oh, um, also, last, we also do this with I do this with LinkedIn. I do this with any social network platform I'm on, by the way, John, I use the same process. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Thank you very much. So there he is, you guys. That's Steven. I'm trying to grow uh, a mustache and my little goatee just like Steven here. So <laughs> it's coming, so Steve. <laughs> yeah, it's coming along, man. Uh, but I got Asian blood, so my face doesn't get hairy like some people do. You know, I got to <laughs> give it some time. Give it some time. <laughs> All right, uh, Steve, thanks for joining us, guys. Um, I'm going to just continue here. Uh, this is kind of a fun video, guys, I want to share with you. Uh, this is um, a video where I tell you people, get creative at home, man. Just get creative. I'm not going to show you guys this whole thing, but I want you guys to see this video, and hopefully you get the sound coming through your, your computer. Here, you turn up the sound, and uh, it's actually pretty – I'm not going to play the whole video, but just listen to this. It's pretty, hairy. it's pretty funny. It's a song by Adele. It's a parody by this guy. Hello, it's me, I'm in California dreaming about going out to eat, just a burger <laughs> with cheese, or a shake and margarita, baby, back ribs from Chili's, hello, can you hear me? I am shouting out to neighbors who I used to like to see when we were outside and free. Is 
There's something else to watch besides the news and finding Dory, the social distance between us, and I'm free now. Just me and myself and I, and I say, oh, order, that's breaking my heart, but it's clearly what we should have done from the start, hello from Corona Live. All right, that was pretty funny, right? I mean, so I hope you guys... Um, that's on YouTube, by the way, and so you can go and watch it and um, and and uh, see the entire thing. But I just thought I'd share that with you, have a little bit of a laugh during these crazy times. And for those of you that already have a license, just make sure that you guys are working on your California continuing education. If you live here or any other state, just get your CEs out of the way. There's different types of certifications that you guys have to get. I don't want to spend too much time on this right here. If you have any questions on this, reach out to John Matalora, and uh, he'll help you through all your CEs. Uh, quick quote here. It says here, problems are not stop signs, but they are guidelines. So all these things that are happening today uh, in our world does not mean for you to stop doing what you have been doing all along, but they're guidelines of stuff that you should be doing uh, as you're sitting there at your house confined. So uh, what, what can you be doing right now? Well, I've got about, let me see how much time I got. I got about 10 more minutes before I um, conclude this webinar. Uh, but some of the things that you should be doing right now, number one, you should be having a virtual lunch with someone through FaceTime or Zoom, right? I mean, why can't you just go on your phone, have a little FaceTime, you're watching each other, having your lunch, having a discussion. It's no different than really being at a restaurant with somebody, right? And now the only difference is that you've been quarantined, right? So uh, I know that Kiki uh, and I have had some discussions about doing a virtual lunch this week. Hopefully my office <laughs> reached out to you, Kiki, and we're doing that. Uh, number two, stay active, man. Just make sure that you're exercising, you're doing something so that you're releasing those chemicals called endorphins, which will trigger an awesome positive feeling inside you. If you're just uh, eating and just, in, you know, just indulging yourself in sweets, not the best way to uh, stay quarantined and confined in your home. So make sure you stay active. If you're going to eat those kinds of things, make sure you're equally active to work those things off. Uh, number three, watch some movies through Amazon Video, On Demand, Netflix, and Hulu. Did you know that there's a an app called Netflix Party on Google Chrome so you can watch movies with others, right? And so what a great time to watch something inspirational, motivational, some uh, romantic comedy that you guys can be doing something fun with each other. Um, and here's a good uh, thing. Read some books or listen to some audio books. Um, my book is also, I'm doing a little promo, I guess, uh, plug-in. But my book is now also have audio. You can go to Amazon. You can get the audio. It's, it's putting, uh, everybody's been texting and saying they love it. So make sure you get this, read it, and listen to it, whatever you got to do. If not, read some other book. Have a great a game night with your family. Uh, paint your house. I mean, we're actually painting one of our rooms. Rather than hiring a painter, we got some paint, and we're painting our own house. Uh, a part, not the whole house, but, you know, a room that we've always wanted to get painted for a while. Uh, do some puzzles. I know my girls and, you know, everyone's up until 1, 2 o'clock working on some 1,000, 2,000 piece puzzles. Um, call someone on FaceTime, check in on them, especially those who live alone. And make sure that they're doing okay, uh, you know, reaching out to some old friends, which is what I've been doing, is reaching out to a lot of my old friends. Uh, some of you that have been wanting to become YouTubers, this is a great time to become uh, a YouTuber and create your own YouTube channel. So if you've been wanting to do it, now's the time. It's not that difficult. All you got to do is get a cell phone, get in front of it, and start recording and you know, do a, you know, just upload it on YouTube, and now you've got your official YouTube channel. Uh, what else can you be doing? Documenting, journaling. Uh, I've been doing this. I actually, every night, well, at the end of the day, 
uh, go up to my room and I'll sit there while I got the TV on and I'll just start journaling everything that I did today, people I called, people I reached out to, um, you know, what, what, what I ate today, you know, just to document my quarantine. I, I've never in my entire life been quarantined, uh, uh, been confined to my own house like this ever in my life. And so I want to, um, I want to create this historic moment and remember it. So I remember what I had to go through and what we did. Right. Uh, make some new playlists. Some of you guys have your playlists on your phones, man. It's like in your iPods are dated. So once you get some new playlists, right, meditate, declutter your house in time for spring cleaning. Right. It's, it's officially spring now. So you can declutter your house. I know that Matt and my kids and I and my staff and Arlene, we've, man, we've been cleaning our entire house out and disposing of stuff. OK, uh, watch the Food Network. I mean, we're, we've got our Food Network channel up every day. I mean, that, that's what we watch more Food Network than we watch the news. We're making new things for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're baking desserts. We've got uh, something fun. Everybody's got a, uh, everybody, everybody's got like a team. Like one person will make breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and we kind of have a rotation. We're always intrigued what we're going to get a chance to eat. Uh, Raul over here so far, he's a great hot dog maker and baked <laughs> beans. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding, brother. And uh, Rose over there, she's really good at uh, making ramen. Okay, she's good at ramen. And, of course, I'm good at peanut butter and jelly. No, I'm kidding. We're, we're doing better food than that. Um <laughs> Start the outline for your new book, as Steve just alluded to. What, what a great time to uh, start your own book, self-publish it, and get on Amazon, right? Revise your business plan. Some of you right now, your business plans are already dated. In your business plan last year, you probably did not expect a, uh, a confinement to your home, a self-quarantine, stay-in-home ordinance, a viral outbreak. So what do you got to do? You got to revise. You got to adapt to your business plans, right? Uh, number 17 put together a new top 25 list um, learn how to run some illustrations on your computer rebudget right I mean recalculate you know how's your what kind of money is going in coming in or going out creating a new dream board or revising your dream board doing some webinars and doing some FaceTime meetings right and cleaning out all your emails so there's so many things I mean this is just a handful of stuff that I'm sharing with you but man you got to be doing something. I don't want to see you guys posting on Facebook that you're bored because, I mean, we are far from being bored, man. We are so busy. In fact, uh, we were just talking that we're busier now than we've ever been. Like, we're busier now than we were before the outbreak came out. So I want you to know that this coming Saturday, uh, April 4th at 10 o'clock a.m., uh, a guy named Cash Rustan and his entire organization, and uh, us, we're going to be doing a, uh, a huge webinar, and we're going to have some special guest speakers on this thing. We want to uh, really encourage all of you to jump on this with us. Uh, if you're on the call tonight, we're going to send you another link. It's a different link than Zoom, and uh, this is an opportunity for you to get guests to come and join us as well. It is open to the public. There's no charge, no fee. We're just excited that we can provide some value to all of you and we hope that tonight that you got some value out of this meeting the most important thing or this webinar uh, it's, is that it's, it's not just to learn about what I just shared with you but uh, folks I really hope you go and take advantage of the $10,000 grant I mean it's free money uh, you can go get the loans I hope you take advantage of that I hope you move your money away from where you have got invested and start going into some of those guaranteed products and the most important thing here is this if you write now are looking for an opportunity you want to make some more money uh, you're interested in and in having another stream of income folks uh, we're exploding right now we could use all the help we can get and so what I want you to do is this either email me at this assistant to John Shane at gmail.com and we'll reach out to you or please uh, get with the person who invited you tonight to be on this webinar and to listen in and we appreciate you uh, listening we hope that Steve and I provided you some value tonight listen in and see if um, 
And get with the person who invited you and say, hey, I want to learn more about what uh, John does and what you do. And everything is very intriguing and, and very uh, inspirational and motivational. And we hope that you guys stay safe, stay quarantined. God bless every single one of you. My wife, Arlene, and my kids, We, and on behalf of our whole staff, we're thinking about you. We're praying for you, for your safety. And uh, we look forward to seeing you this coming Saturday. Hey, by the way, next week on Tuesday, I'm going to have – three guest speakers on this and I think that you want to listen in because I think uh, uh, one of those guest speakers that are going to be on this webinar with us next week on Tuesday is someone who mentored me so they always say who mentors the mentors uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to meet one of my mentors next week on Tuesday on this call so on this webinar so stay tuned we're going to say uh, same thing that you guys did today to um, say what Okay, so it's going to be the same link that you guys got today in your emails. Uh, please pass it out. You don't have to re-register re anything like that. We do have um, today. We had almost 400 people on this call tonight, and we're absolutely thrilled to have you guys join us. We love you. We're praying for you. Take care. We'll see you this coming Saturday, and join us next week on Tuesday at 7:30. Take care, everybody. We love you.